Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from anthonymorganti.com. Welcome to Mastering On One Photo Raw 2018. In this video, we're going to take a look at the lens correction panel that's in the develop module of On One Photo Raw 2018. Most often, you won't even have to open up this panel because it's designed in such a way that it will automatically determine what lens you used, then automatically apply any distortion correction to your image based upon what lens it found. Now, there are times where it will not find the lens you used, and that's what we're going to be talking about today. Now, in the case of this image, it was shot with a Nikon 200 to 500 millimeter lens. And if we look over at the lens correction um, panel, you'll see that it found the correct make lens, but it did not find a match for the actual model lens. So what you could do if this happens to you is just first make sure that it found the correct make. Uh, click on that drop down and make sure that it found the correct make lens. You could see that there's dozens listed. It did find that, so it did find the Nikon lens. Then click in the lens drop down and see if you could find the exact lens used. Now I already checked and the Nikon 200 to 500 is not listed. So if that's the case, what can you do? Well, there's one of two different things you could do and one is immediate. That immediate thing is you could manually correct the lens yourself. To do that, where it says manual here, there's a little expose triangle. And when you click on that, you'll see that it reveals a number of adjustments. And that first slider is called distortion. Well, what does that mean? Well, usually a lens will induce upon the scene one of two different types of distortion, and those are barrel and pincushion. And if you look on the left, barrel distortion gives you this kind of barrel look to your image and that will most often happen with wide angle lenses and usually a wide angle lens is defined as something wider than 35 millimeters but it could happen maybe with a 50 millimeter lens don't let that fool you so barrel distortion most often happens with a wider angle lens it more often happens with a zoom wide angle lens and it more happens often happens with a cheaper zoom wide angle lens so you'll get barrel distortion Pincushion distortion, on the other hand, help, happens with telephoto lenses. And it more often happens with zoom telephoto lenses, and it more often happens with cheaper zoom telephoto lenses. So, pincushion distortion is probably something that I have in this scene. Now, it's difficult to see because it's just a shot of an eagle's head. But if I feel that it is pincushioned a bit, to correct for it, I would take this slider and move it to the right. And you can see as I move it to the right, it is making my image barrel. So that is correcting for any pincushion distortion. So if you have a zoom telephoto lens or even just a telephoto lens, you would probably want to move this slider to the right. On the other hand, if you have a wide angle lens, you're probably going to want to move this slider to the left and you can see when I move it to the left it's causing my image to pin cushion which of course would correct any barrel distortion barrel distortion is induced by wide angle lenses so to the left for wide angle lenses to the right for telephoto lenses now it's just really no scientific way to do this you just have to look at the image and kind of make it look normal to you. Now it does help if you have some vertical lines and horizontal lines in your image and they're really square to one another that would help you just move the slider until the lens or those lines are perfectly straight. Now once you get that done you got to deal with some fringing. Now sometimes you'll get some color fringing and that most happens in verticals and horizontals that are high contrast. So if you have a sky and you have a power line going across it or a tree trunk going up into the sky, something like that where you're going to have uh, a high contrast um, between the two edges, like the shoulder of this eagle here would be a high contrast edge. You zoom in and you might see, there, it, I don't see it in this case, but you might see some purple fringing or green fringing. And if you do, just move 
either of these sliders to the right to correct for that. Um, this image doesn't have any, and usually a better lens won't give you any color fringe, usually, uh, unless you kind of messed up the exposure and you really had to uh, adjust exposure a lot in post-production. Then you might get some fringing, but usually better lenses today, they have a lot of coatings on them that uh, eliminate any color fringing. But if you do, just move the uh, correct slider to the right to kind of eliminate that color fringing. Now what all lenses do is they do have some degree of fall off and that usually is in the edges and the corners and it usually will be a darker fall off so it's almost like vignetting. And what you would do in that case is if it's darker vignetting take the amount slider move it to the right and you can see it brightens the edges. If you do have lighter fall off you would move it to the left to kind of darken those edges. Now the midpoint is you might have the fall off more prominent in one corner as opposed to another corner. So you could move the midpoint around to try to balance it out so that you're applying your fall off correction evenly across the scene. So you would move that to try to correct for that. Now if you did these corrections and you're satisfied that these are perfect corrections for a Nikon 200 to 500 millimeter lens shot at let's say 500 millimeters. I'm not sure when I shot this at. Shot at, where is it? 480 millimeters. If you think that's perfect, then you could create a preset for it. And to do that, right where it says style, there's a little drop down and you would save a new style. They don't call it preset, they call it style. So you could call it, and you could give it a name, like Nikon uh, 200 to 500 at um, yeah, 480 millimeters, kind of splitting hairs there. But then I could save it. So that is there now. So if I reset this, and then I could automatically come in here and pick that preset, and you can see it move the sliders automatically to correct for that so-called uh, distortion that that lens induced upon my image. Now again, I'm not too keen on doing it manually because I don't think it's just a guess game, guessing game really on your part. Unless you have some really nice straight horizontals and verticals in your scene that are perpendicular to each other, then you could really probably do a really good um, distortion uh, correction for that specific scene at that specific focal length. Now, the other thing I mentioned there, I said there were two different things you could do. One was immediate, and that's what we just looked at. The other thing you could do is you could submit your lens to a project where they will do lens corrections for your specific lens and put them in a freeware database. On one takes that freeware database and will implement any new lenses into their update. So to do that, and I'll include links for this, in the description below the video. The first is you go to On One's website, and I'll have a link again in the description below. And you could first look and see all the lenses that are supported so far. But at the top, there'll be a link to submit a lens profile to what is called the Lens Fun Project. And when you follow that link, you'll come to here. And this is the Lens Fun Project, and they have explicit instructions of what you need to do to send in some test shots with your specific lens and they will do lens corrections for it, put it in a public database, then on one will take that public database and implement any new lenses into an update. So take a look here, I'm not going to get into it specifically, but you have to um, you know, take specific types of shots at specific focal lengths and for your specific lens and then send it in and I'm not sure how long it takes. I've never done it, and I really don't plan on doing it. But, you know, give it a shot. If you really have a lens you use all the time, I mean all the time, and it's not here, it could be really troublesome, um, especially if you're a real estate photographer or um, a fine art, um, like cityscape photographer, or something like that, where you really need it to be lens corrected, you're seen to be lens corrected. This might be worth it to you to make sure that you... Uh, uh, you know, send this stuff in and then it will get 
uh, supported eventually. I'm not sure the how long it takes or anything like that, but give it a shot. And, you know, let me know how it makes how you make out and if it does work uh, in a reasonable amount of time. So that's it for the lens correction panel. Hopefully that made sense. Thank you, everyone that watches my videos. I truly, I really, really do appreciate it. Thank you so much. I'll talk to you guys soon.